Hello, Parrish family and friends of St. Edward Parish. Today, Wednesday, is the sixth day within the Novena in preparation for Pentecost. And you know, these days between the Ascension and Pentecost Sunday, they kind of take on a special character. You might recall those days that we celebrate in December, those days between Christmas and New Year's Day. During those days between Christmas and New Year's Day, we're still continuing the celebration of Christmas, and yet at the same time, we're kind of looking forward to New, Year, New Year's Day. Well, these days between Ascension and Pentecost, they're kind of similar to that. We still are continuing to celebrate the glorious Ascension of our Lord into heaven, into His celestial home, and yet at the same time, we are preparing to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit once again on Pentecost Sunday. And you know, there's an intimate relationship between the ascension of the Lord and the sending of the Spirit on Pentecost. For when the Lord goes into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, He along with the Father, they together send the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the church. And you know, just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he made a promise to the disciples and to us. He said, Behold, I am with you until the end of the age. So the Lord Jesus is with us now as we speak. And how is he still among us? Well, you know the church has enumerated a number of ways that the Lord Jesus continues to abide with his people. First, he lives in us by the power of grace, because of faith and because of the sacraments, Jesus, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit, they have taken up their abode within us. We call that indwelling of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus and of the Father. We call that sanctifying grace. So Jesus dwells within us. But you know, Jesus is also present by virtue of his divine nature, because he's God. Jesus is present throughout the entire cosmos. You know, the New Testament tells us that everything was made for him, through him, and in him. So Jesus is present to the entire creation by virtue of his divine nature. The church teaches us that Jesus is present to us in a special way when the scriptures are proclaimed at Holy Mass. When we hear the scriptures proclaimed at Mass, it is Jesus himself speaking to us and instructing us and inspiring us and correcting us. Also, Jesus is present to us whenever we as his disciples gather in his name. Remember in the Gospel, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. So when we come together as God's people to celebrate the sacraments and to sing the praises of God, He is with us. Jesus is present when every single sacrament is celebrated in the church. And finally, in a most awesome and unimaginable way, Jesus is present to us in the real presence of his body and blood of the Holy Eucharist. You might ask yourself, if we have all these different ways that the Lord Jesus is present to us, why do we underscore and highlight so often as a church the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist? Why do we always cause that to stand out? Well, we have to ask ourselves the question, how is it that Jesus saved you and I? What is the source of our salvation? The source of our salvation is the sacred humanity of Jesus Christ as it is united to the second person of the Blessed Trinity. So the second person of the Trinity has taken upon himself our humanity, a human body, and a human soul. 
And it is through that human body and human soul, as it is offered to the Father, that you and I are saved. There is nothing more pleasing to the sight of the Eternal Father than the sacred humanity of His Son. That humanity that was knit together through the power of the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary and offered back to the Father on Calvary. That's what has saved us, His sacred humanity. And you and I have to get in contact with that sacred humanity of Jesus. Where do we find Jesus still clothed in His sacred humanity? Only in two places, so to speak. We find the sacred humanity of Jesus sitting right now at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And we also find His sacred humanity in all the tabernacles of our Catholic Church and always being offered back to the Father in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. That's where we're saved by the offering of the humanity of Jesus to the Father. That's why the Church underscores so much the importance of the Holy Eucharist. So let us praise God and thank God for the abiding presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And as we now continue uh, through this novena in preparation for Pentecost, I just want to encourage you to continue to pray your novena. And you know what? If you never even started the novena, or maybe you skipped a day or forgot a day, don't worry about it. There's still three days left to Pentecost. You can dedicate three days of prayer. We call that a triduum. Three days of prayer is a triduum. You can have your own triduum in preparation for Pentecost Sunday. So that would be praying on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And one of the best ways to make a triduum um, in preparation for Pentecost, uh, would do this, to meditate on the glorious mysteries of the Rosary every single day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And especially as you think of those glorious mysteries, think about the presence of the Holy Spirit in each of those glorious mysteries. For example, the first glorious mystery, the resurrection of our Lord, it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that the humanity of Jesus Christ is raised up on Easter Sunday morning. The second glorious mystery, as Jesus ascends to his Father, as he ascends to his Father, he sends the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the church, upon us. The third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, the fulfillment of that promise. For Jesus promised, I will send you another advocate. The fourth glorious mystery, the assumption, the bodily assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven. Her body is the ark, is the temple of God the Holy Spirit. She is the spouse of the Holy Spirit, not just on the day of the Annunciation, but now for all eternity. She remains the spouse of the Holy Spirit, and as the Holy Spirit brings her to heaven, the fifth glorious mystery, the coronation of Our Lady, where she is crowned as Queen of Heaven and Earth, Queen of the Cosmos, as we read in the Book of Revelation. So I encourage you to continue to prepare yourselves for the great feast of the Solemnity of the Pentecost, of the coming of the Spirit, and praise be Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, now and forever. Amen.